I can't question? enjoy it with one particle. Yeah, you know, one man said if they find another sub subatomic particle, they're going to tar and feather it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, are you By the way, I don't think there are any. I no, think it's I a whole think so. a lot of point. Yeah. I think a tau is just a big electron, and a yeah. muon is a big electron. It's all just uh, jumbled together. Exactly. Well, I wondered if you studied Charles Lucas. Uh, no, I never studied Mark. anybody. <laughs> but, but he Honestly. Has, okay, he has a very, you know, he's talking about an expanding Earth also. His uh, explanation is, is the decay of the gravitational field, that the gravitational yeah. fields are decaying. I think, I think that's like a lot of, uh, I think that's very nice. It's like a, it's like a lot of theories. I don't, let me, let me just say this. I'm a practical person, okay? If you walk down the street with me, Somebody attacks us, I'll kill them. You know why I'll kill them? Because I learned how to kill people. Okay? That's the only reason I'll be able to kill them. I can't brag and say, I'll kill them. I know I can kill them. Okay? That's a fact. Okay? And I'm saying that because I believe in facts. I understand facts. When somebody presents theories, you have that you have to do this, then you have to do this, then then you have to do this to get to that that conclusion. It becomes too complicated, doesn't make any sense to me. Aren't we, when we found the electron, uh, 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 proton and neutron, aren't we going back to a simpler, right. simpler, simpler thing? If I say to you, if I say to you, here's an electron or a positron, okay? There's no such thing as gravity, okay? Electron is an attractive force, uh, excuse me, <laughs> a positron is an attractive force. We put that positron inside of our proton, it attracts. We have an electron on the outside that re repels, mostly basically repels the, the, the positron. Now we've got a balanced universe. If we have enough of those particles, we'll have gravity. Because we have an attractive force, and around it we have this negative force holding against it. So we'll not only have gravity, we'll have a universe that segments various parts of it, like our cells are segmented in our body. So solar, uh, excuse me, uh, solar systems don't run into solar systems, galaxies, except for the rare exception, don't run into galaxies. Essentially, we keep our atoms and our bodies are kept apart by the electromagnetic fields of our body. Isn't it logical to say that that same force controls the universe? I'm not saying. I'm just saying I don't see anything else. Yeah, but what I wanted to have, the question I wanted to ask I'm sorry. is if the Earth was. You're saying it was smaller at one time. I'm saying it was the size of a meatball. It was an ion to be yeah, but, but how would that affect the, the moon in, in the relationship with the moon? I'm wondering. Why is the moon, moon moving outward? Well, that okay. would be one, one explanation. Okay. But I mean, when it was smaller, when the Earth was smaller, let me give wouldn't it affect the let moon? Me try, let me try to explain this to you. Right. Within this reason. Within this reasonable look at the universe, okay? One more. Want to check him over there? Yeah, one more. Within this reasonable look at the universe, I don't look at the Earth as being an independent body. I don't see how we can. I don't look at the moon as being an independent body. In fact, I don't look at the solar system as being an independent body. Isn't the solar system a solar system? And if it's a solar system, isn't all the electromagnetic field of the solar system part of that system? Yeah, okay. Just like with atoms, when I say the atom is a gnat inside of a stadium of electromagnetic field, isn't our solar system the sun's of electromagnetic the sun's electromagnetic field, and all these other things are flying around within it? If that is the case, okay. We know the sun gets bigger, but scientists will tell you it's not really getting bigger. It's doing this, that, and the other thing. No, it's not. It's converting hydrogen to helium, and that's all it's been doing for four and a half billion years. So what are you talking about? It's getting bigger, and it's getting brighter. So is our universe getting bigger and brighter, and it's accelerating exponentially. So is the Earth. So is the sun. Excuse me. It's all doing the same thing. If that's the case, OK? I know my enthusiasm might drag you along, so and I, I apologize. I apologize for that. I get that. What I'm saying is that if the electromagnetic field of the sun grows, then the then and Earth grows, the moon will move out. The Earth will move out. All the planets will move out. It will all grow within the field. Why do the spatial relationships change between? They don't. They just get bigger. 
They don't change, they get bigger. The spatial, the spatial relationships stay the same. All our planets have the same spatial relationship that they've always had. They're all progressively going outward. It just gets to be bigger. Doesn't, am I saying something wrong? Isn't that true? Okay. There's a theory that sort of talks, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, uh, I have a, you can also uh, introduce another argument that the mass in the universe is accounted, you can account with you can count for the mass and energy of the universe. For example, uh, you have this so-called uh, uh, terminology called virtual particle, or virtual, uh, some, some sort of virtual particle. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in virtual particles. Let me go on. All right, just so we'll agree that a virtual limit. particle is bullshit. I, I That's a part of it. I don't believe in it. Okay, so fine. Let's see. You have the, the so-called <laughs> electron and the positron. The positron is the electrons and the particles. And they 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 actually can can actually uh, one is just the opposite of the other. And, okay, and that's, all other. But that's all it is. But okay. that's all it is. That's all it is. It's just like just like well, negative is opposite of positive. Yeah. That's all. And uh, since we live in in material world we, we observe by interference. Therefore there are certain things that we cannot observe. And you can maintain also when when the electron and the positron meet each other and instead of using the term annihilation, I don't, stupid something, term. I don't, I don't believe something just, just right. exists and it, it's sure. not there at all. So what happens, you have the, the so-called positronium. Now, they maintain that they have observed this positronium that has the same, a very similar waveform as the hydrogen atom. Yes. You have to find structure kind of course it does. similar waveforms. And guess what? They, these, these, these guys, they, 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 they propagate on. You don't see the path, but they make no path whatsoever. And, and all of a sudden, then this, this electron and positron disappears from, from the trajectory. Okay, let me. And it is, and it appears right. over there somewhere. And let me, let, and well, I don't know about that. What happens? The positronium, you know, splits up. Then you have a proton and electron again. Okay, let me let me just let me just explain what was just explained to me. There's a we think that people think that electrons and positrons annihilate each other, and they we've been saying that for 60 years. That's not true. This is exactly what happens with electron and positron. They approach each other, they accelerate toward each other, they orbit each other for a nanosecond, they become, for that nanosecond, a thing that scientists call, haha, -ha, laughable, laughably, positronium. For an instant, they become positronium, then they disappear. Really? Really. Now that's not something I'm saying. Is that right? They become out of our sight. We can't detect they, We can't determine them. We can't. They essentially disappear from our understanding of how things work. That's it. That's what happens. All this bullshit that you've heard about antimatter and all the rest of it is horseshit. Most of this, this theory stuff is just crap. Okay. I'm not saying it's crap because it's an opinion or a theory. And I told you before I'm going to tell you a theory. This isn't a theory. This is a fact. Most of this stuff is crap. Okay? <laughs> electrons, <laughs> electrons and positrons don't destroy each other. You can't destroy anything. You can't use a word like annihilation. Well, that's a particular term that we use in our particular end of the field. Screw you. <laughs> Excuse me. Guess what we talk here? We talk English here. We talk English. Regular street talk. We don't want to hear that. I'm not going to my auto rhino laryngologist. I'm going to my ear, nose, and throat man. <laughs> It's just, it's just crap. You hear this stuff. After a while, you just, you know, when you hear a scientist talk, when they, they talk that talk, within a half a minute, I, you can see it. I see it when I try to explain things. Their eyes go dead. You ever see that? Somebody's talking to somebody, their eyes go dead. They go, huh? Like that. You're not listening anymore because two words back, you didn't understand what the hell that word meant. You can't put it together in a sentence. That's how they talk to us. But it's not, this isn't, excuse me, this isn't rocket science. It's just mechanics. It's just the way things work. And if a guy talks long enough in a, in a regular way of talking, any concept that is out there is easily understood by almost anybody. Maybe not Joe, that cab driver I had last night, but almost anybody. Because they're not difficult, right? It's simple processes. So what I'm saying to you is that we just have to understand the processes. And that's what I've tried to do for 30 years. And that's, this is the theory that I've come up with. I believe it's true. I haven't found, I've, let, I've looked for the last 11 years to find a hole in it, and I haven't found a hole in it. So, you know, I mean, if somebody in this room could do it, sure. go ahead, we'll take a shot. Okay. 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 <laughs> Look, we could go on all day, really. Um, no, but wait, I want to hear his question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, we'll do one more, and then we, we're gonna have a group photo out here. Right? Isn't this fun? Yeah. Okay, I want to tell you, 